everyone. Welcome to eCoffee with Experts. I'm your host, Matt Fraser. And on today's show, I have with me a very special guest, Islin Monastery. Islin is the Chief Revenue Officer and co-founder of Thea Marketing. Before th- founding Thea Marketing, uh, she was a reservoir engineer in Alaska. She takes her unique experiences that she gained while working in the oil and gas industry and applies them to the complex marketing world. Her ability to identify a complex problem and develop a custom solution has been invaluable for her work and volunteer achievements. As, as the Chief Revenue Officer of Thea Marketing, she helps drive return on investment for growing technology, energy, and healthcare companies using cutting-edge growth marketing and digital marketing strategies and tactics such as Facebook ads, Google ads, search engine optimization, email marketing, marketing automation, conversion rate optimization, and web analytics. In her spare time, she enjoys reading a good book, going for hikes with her family, and mentoring young people. Islin, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. That's great to have you. So you've had an interesting journey so far, working in oil and gas, and then trans, trans, uh, transferring to, to a marketing position. Um, you know, what did you want to be when you were a kid and why? Sure. Uh, it's interesting. I actually, when I was looking back at some old documents my mom saved, you know, in a drawer somewhere back at home, I, I wanted to be a model. Oh, yeah. Like when I was nine years old, I wanted to be a model. And I'm like, what, what was I thinking? <laughs> like, uh, or, or I also yeah. wanted to be an offer. Um, yeah. And I do have a, I did self-publish a book called You Are oh, yeah. Enough. Um, but I, I mean, like, it, it's just interesting when you're a kid, like how far off reality yeah comes in like 10 20 years later yeah well if it's any consolation i wanted to be a milkman when i was in kindergarten and that job doesn't exist anymore so (laughs) (laughs) i remember i couldn't think of uh i couldn't i couldn't think of anything um so i just jotted it down but anyway so if you could have one superpower what would it be uh if i could have one superpower and i feel like this is actually a superpower that anyone can develop Oh, okay. Right? It's it's really talking about you know the ability to sell well. I ah. call that the ability to grow money on trees. Absolutely, um, that is. And that's that yeah. that's a that's a skill I'm developing. So I want oh, awesome. to be able to to be able to grow money on trees for our agency. So yeah. we pay our employees and pay our technology bills and all of that. Absolutely. So growing money on trees that that'd be my superpower. Okay, so if if you won the lottery today, like the Super Lotto or whatever it, it, it is, what what would you do? Uh, I would move out of our co-family space, and we would oh, yeah. move into our own house. And I, I I don't know, we would hire a couple more people. Okay. Um, and yeah, to be honest, I really wouldn't change my lifestyle significantly. Yeah. After winning the lotto, because because you you read all those case studies of people who go bankrupt like a few years after winning the lotto. So, um, yeah, manage the money properly. What about any donations? Would you donate to any causes that you're that you're interested in or any foundations or something like that? Yeah, um, I volunteered with Junior Achievement when I lived in Texas. I do volunteering with Nepris, which is like a would be interesting because it's like a Zoom. You basically Zoom with students oh, yeah. about your experience. So sharing your career experience experiences with students across the country on Nepris via oh, Zoom. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. so I would I would probably support Nepris. I would support uh, the Denver Zoo. Oh yeah, because we uh, we go there fairly regularly during spring, summer, and fall. And, oh cool. Uh, and I would, I would go, I would also give money to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. All right on. Because, yeah, you can't always teach that process-based thinking and critical yeah. thinking without uh, zoos and museums. So. Oh, absolutely. So, um, when did you first know that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Because I know, I know you're, you, know, you and your, your husband have started this agency. And so I'm just curious when you when you first knew you wanted to do that, or have you have you always had entrepreneurial aspirations? I feel the entrepreneurship was out of necessity. 
Uh, oh, okay. My husband. So when we we lived in Texas and Alaska, and then we I guess at that point my husband became tired of you know in the oil field, you know you living in Calgary, you understand that there's like layoffs every yeah. every six months to a year when there's a new acquisition, when there's you know when something changes in the business landscape for that company, they're yeah. usually they're they're like layoffs are part of the landscape. So we're tired of riding that rodeo, um, and we really wanted to build something that was enduring mm-hmm. uh, for our kids. Um, and and we chose, you know, marketing agency, which has evolved into a, more of a HubSpot technology consulting agency. Yeah. Uh, so that that's where we we've grown, and now we're a HubSpot Platinum so- Solutions partner. Excuse me. That's um, amazing. Yeah, so I mean, it's just it's just taking I, there. Even though I really like, it, it's a good movie ish. But there's there's a movie, uh, in, I think in the Rambo series or something, um, uh-huh. where you it's it's one punch at a time, it's one round at a time, yeah, one game at a time. So you just you just keep on going, right? You just keep on that repeatability of the process and. Uh, that's that's how we we built our our agency. So oh, yeah. I think entrepreneurship is really about you know you do a lot of personal growth in like while growing your company, right? You you move from fear to love and abundance, mm-hmm. right? It, it, it's not it's not easy growing your own agency in no. the fear based thinking. So you have to move your thinking and mindset in completely different ways. Yeah. So what is, uh, what are some hard choices you've had to make to get where you are today with your agency? I mean, um, I, I would say, you know, we, we work, we live in the basement of my mother-in-law's house, um, which is, which is great, which was bigger than our house in, in Houston. <laughs> so, uh, but I mean, like you know, you just make some make sacrifices. Uh, we're a one car family, um, but working remote, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, you 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 make those those sacrifices so that you you can get to the next level, right? And you, yeah, and you start absolutely. figuring out cash flow, accounting systems you know, CPQ, configure price quote systems, um, yeah. all, of, all of that. So that's, I don't know, <laughs> like, it, it's just, you just solve one problem at a time, right? Yeah. That, those are all, all challenges that, uh, those are all things that you, that people don't tell you about when you go to start an agency, figuring out what, whittling down your cost per action and figuring out how you're going to, you talked about sales before and figure out how you're going to, how are you going to sell that, uh, you know, and how are you going to get it fulfilled? Those are, those are some challenging things I've found. Um, that's for sure. Um, so how did you, you know, you went from oil field engineer, like in, in, in that capacity, and then you started doing digital marketing. How, how did that happen? Like, how did you start learning about digital marketing? What was one of the first projects you worked on? I mean, uh, we we learned about marketing through duct tape marketing and HubSpot Academy. Oh yeah. Um, that those are two great resources. Um, I would say HubSpot Academy is by far the best free resource for folks out there who are getting their feet wet in marketing. Um, HubSpot Academy. Yeah, HubSpot Academy. All right on. Um. Yeah, and then you just start start doing projects for clients. Um, start acquiring clients, learning as you go, and believing in the ability that that you have that you have the ability to learn and to grow. Yeah. Right. Pivoting industries is difficult, but um, yeah, my it was interesting. Like my husband applied to like a hundred jobs, like in different engineering fields and petroleum engineering, and they didn't want him because they he wasn't their type of engineer. Oh wow. Right. They're very specific. It's like you're not a mechanical engineer. You're not a chemical engineer. You're not this specific 
engineer that fits in this perfect keyhole, right? Yeah. And you don't have like these experiences that I'm I'm wanting or or something like that. So he started the marketing agency, um, and we've really turned into more of a technical consulting agency, and we've yeah. gotten really good at implementing onboarding and implementing HubSpot through workflows and automation and putting business process, you know, your marketing sales, customer success process straight into, into HubSpot. Yeah. Well, that's interesting how that evolved. So how did that end up happening? Uh, how did that process go from offering marketing services to more business processes and uh, CRM and automation Im- Im- implementation? Um, I, I would say it's just, you know, acquiring one client at a time. Yeah. Um, through, I would say for whatever means possible, right? You have communities, events, LinkedIn outreach, email outreach. There's, there's a lot of different channels to get sales, right? And you just yeah. need to refine the channel that works well for yeah. your, your agency. There is, unfortunately, I, I mean, I wish I could say there was like one thing, there's like one magic bullet that that worked for us, but um, yeah. it's not that, not that simple. But did you, like you said, you started off as a marketing agency and then you pivoted to the business process side. What, what made that change is what I guess I'm asking. I, I guess what made that change is, is we adapted to what our clients needed. Ah, okay. Right. So we changed our services to match what our clients needed. Oh, it I see. It wasn't like yeah. a, a magic pivot of like, we're looking at magical strategy yeah. right? because there's, there's a lot of folks that are like, we're just going to think of these magical strategies and they will, they will automatically like work wonders yeah. in your business. It, it doesn't yeah. work that way. We pivoted with the market, right? So yeah. we, what our clients needed, they needed a business process. We provide a business process and yeah. business process. Um, when you look at marketing in the context of business process, that, that seems yeah. like a better um, more value, right? Because you're trying to drive their growth engine and driving yeah. their growth engine is not only for marketing, right? It's yeah. marketing sales and making sure you don't have a lot of churn in the customer success, you know, fulfillment side, whether yeah. that be in software or tech or, yeah. or nonprofits or government, right? You So you're just trying to optimize the, mm-hmm. the business process to help them grow their their customers yeah and turn customers into evangelists absolutely so how have you been able to take and pivot and and like put that into some like productize the business processes like for instance um how have you been able to like create a a a product out of the 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 offering that you're doing or or the service that you're doing to 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 sell that to the market I mean, productizing services comes at a certain maturity level of yeah. your agency, right? Mm-hmm. You see like a certain something that's repeatable um, mm-hmm. and then you decide to productize, you know, as an agency, you're selling time, right? So productizing the number of hours and yeah. meetings or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's how we, we productized. Do you have different... Um segmentations of what you offer for instance like a bronze silver gold platinum implementation um service or for for businesses yeah so we we offer uh what i call starter we, we kind of took stuff <laughs> we, we we took the naming from hubspot but we have a fiat concierge starter plan which is fairly light and oh, yeah. i think you get like two two monthly meetings with us and we work on strategy and technical implementation um, mm-hmm. So yeah, a certain number of hours of strategy and, and implementation with that. Uh, same thing for the Fiat Concierge Professional, Fiat Concierge Enterprise, and then we also have a Fiat Concierge Custom, which uh, which is like our highest number of hours, and you're you're trying to do a lot of heavy lifting in that yeah. single single like three three month four month period. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so how do you think? What do you think about the importance of uh, automation in regards to marketing for for businesses? I guess the you know there's there's mark there's lots of different marketing automation platforms, um, but I would say the the marketing automation makes it easier to nurture 
uh, prospects to customers. Um, so you're you're really driving that deal pipeline through marketing, yeah. right? So as you're nurturing a marketing qualified lead into a sales qualified lead, so then you know you've implemented lead scoring along with the marketing you know, workflows that you have, like sending emails or calls or whatever it may be, um, taking those certain marketing actions to, to those folks. Um, and they, if they've interacted enough, then they're ready to be handed off the sales. Um, yeah. So what kind of, what kind of things do you do to score leads? Um, like lead scoring is really, uh, it's, it's more art than science, right? Like oh, okay. our first, well, I mean, I would say like the art is, these are the actions they're going to take. And then the science is we're going to score a certain point amount to those actions. Oh, okay. Are right. So that's all action examples that you could share from. So for example, they clicked, for example, they clicked on a link in an email. That's a yeah. hundred points. Right. Okay. Or they, they went, you know, with HubSpot, you can, there's tracking code where you can see if a contact has visited their web, your website. So they yeah. visited like your, your uh, homepage three times. That's like say 50 points a time. Right. Okay. So that's, that's very basic lead scoring. Um, and so if they've engaged enough with your product or service via like the marketing actions of like visiting a landing page, attending an event, clicking on links in an email, um, you know, for you know, or listening to your podcast, for example, yeah. like there's different there's different actions they take along that uh, customer journey, right? Absolutely. So, so once they once they've had enough of those those touch points with you, then you know you know at this point this leads this lead score has gotten to say like a thousand points. And you you take that score and then you're like, okay, at this score, we're going to automatically send this person to sales. So yeah. you have a workflow in the background that says, you know, send send this, you know, send this person to the sales rep in this territory. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and then hopefully, you know, sales will engage. There's also a uh, service level agreements that you need to have between marketing and sales, right? Yeah. Like if you have an inbound lead that fills out a form that says, oh my God, I'm super interested in this solution, then sales will get back in a certain amount of time yeah. to that inbound, inbound, that inbound lead. Yeah, absolutely. So is there a process you take for working with, discussing with clients, the value of those actions? For instance, you mentioned that uh, clicking on a button would be 100 points and certain amount, something else is worth so many points. Is it just a matter of consulting with the client about what is of most valuable? Or is there a standard for like a click button? Is there a standard in, in, in your experience that a button click is worth this and a page visit is worth this across the board? No. No. Right. I try, I try to think of a business as its own ecosystem, right? So each business yeah, okay. will have their own lead scoring it's not like there's there i mean you can start with a basic template right yeah but but i mean like how you implement the lead scoring and everything that's that's where the strategy comes in yeah right and that's that's why lead scoring is a different animal for every every business because not every business might have events right not and or like not every business like I mean, say for example, they interact with a landing page to to get an ebook, right? Yeah, a um, league magnet. Yeah, a league magnet. Uh, so I mean, like that that's like a different score, right? Yeah. So I mean, like there there are commonalities between different businesses, I would say, for lead yeah. scoring, but there is there is no like this is this is like the the what I call like the roadmap to doing lead scoring. This is like the one thing, the one Excel spreadsheet. That mm-hmm. that you that you use. I, I, that you use. I wish There's it was no that easy. Ma- There's, There's no, no master, master spreadsheet for this, right? <laughs> There's no lead scoring bible. <laughs> yeah, there's no lead scoring bible, right? Like, and it's really an iterative process, right? So, like, you implement your first lead scoring, you test it between marketing and sales. They realize, oh, we're sending them too early, or we're sending them too late, or we've missed the boat ah, on this. So then you iterate. Yeah, you have to iterate and test, 
right? Wow. It's not like set it and forget it. I, I, yeah. I wish. And then, so then like mar- marketing and marketing ops people wouldn't have jobs, right? Because yeah. if you're not iterating and testing, like yeah. what's the point of your, of your lead scoring? Absolutely. No, you got to always improve those funnels. So what's the biggest challenge you've incurred, uh, you've uh, encountered with marketing automation and, and working with uh, campaigns like this? business processes and things like that? I mean, I would say some of the, I can highlight some, some of the bigger challenges we've had. Um, we've worked with revenue communities before. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, getting the right scope of work in the proposal, discovery proposal process is really key to making sure you don't over-service the client. Oh yeah. Right. And having a process to, to keep the client apprised of how many hours you've used. Right. Yeah. It's like you've used X number of hours this month. You have X like Y number of hours left uh-huh. to do this. We won't be able to get everything done. Here's a backlog of projects. We'll, we'll do this next month. Um, yeah. If you're doing how do you agile. Handle those? Yeah. How do you handle those conversations? Is it difficult or are there clients? I mean, so we have an account manager. Yeah. We have an account manager who's really good at relationships, right? Okay. And so she helps facilitates those conversations. Um, yeah. So it's not, I, I wouldn't say it's like, it's bad, but I mean, clients need, like you need to know when you're over-servicing a client. Yeah. So basically like we did way too much work in a single month for one client. Uh-huh. Um, and then, and then you lose money on that project because you realize like you weren't paid Sorry. for all, like, you want yeah. to track it? Well, I, I recommend Harvest, right? Harvest? Any, oh, yeah. I love Harvest uh, for time tracking, right? Um, so you can see when you've like gone, you're getting close to like burning up all those, all those hours. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Um, so like the challenge is like internal business process. And then the challenge is not over-servicing clients. And then sometimes, you know, you have certain clients that are on like 20 different systems and they're like, oh, gosh. I, wa- I want you to integrate all these systems through this one data integration platform and HubSpot and yeah. like put it, all, put it all together for me and automate everything. And we include yeah. some Zapier apps in there. And, and it's like, you know, like sometimes technology, like we have... It's interesting in our in our proposals, we have a clause that says, due to the limitations of these revenue operations or HubSpot or whatever system yeah. we're we're using, um, we your your solution may not be possible. Like, yeah. yeah. So so it's like we have we have some disclaimers there. <laughs> like, Absolutely. It's not not, not Absolutely. always possible to implement your ideal solution because yeah. it's yeah. it's always possible to get there. But are you willing to pay? Yeah. To get there. No, I, like, yeah, absolutely. Um, have you? Uh, I forgot my question. Oh, so what's one of the biggest success stories you've seen as a result of uh, implementing the, the processes and marketing uh, automation that you do? Um, I would say we've we've helped the client increase their business by like seventy percent. Oh wow! Um, just That's by implementing process. Uh, task tracking, so it was implementing HubSpot Sales Pro for their sales team. Oh yeah. Um. So so like with all that activity tracking you can do in HubSpot, you can figure out which activities are moving the needle the most for for them. So you can you can track all yeah. of that in the deal in the deal creation pipeline. And get um, higher higher close rates for sales. Yeah, like where are you mining? your sales from did they come in from cold outreach did they come in from inbound yeah they, like where did they where did they come in um yeah, absolutely so what are some of the most important metrics then to to track in order to see the difference in conversions and the connection between marketing and sales i mean that that obviously i would say that varies for every business yeah. But you have what I call leading leading indicators, uh-huh. uh, and lagging. I, I guess they're not really lagging indicators, but like for example, leading indicators um, would be, for example, say website traffic. Yeah. Um, so if you're seeing an uptick in website traffic, and then, or so for example, if you're running a campaign in HubSpot, 
and you have all of your assets, whether they be social media assets, landing pages, buttons, forms, attributed to that campaign, uh, you can see what's the ROI that you drove through that campaign. Yeah. Um, you know, paid social, all of that. So, so for example, if a wedding photographer, like his leading indicator is like the number of views in a gated landing page oh, okay. of his pricing page, right? So if you can get the number of views up on that, then you know the lagging indicator, there'll be more calls and then there'll be more booked meetings, more deals in the pipeline. Um, well, what strategies and tactics do you use to, to, um, to keep track so to track the different campaigns that are running on the different channels? Um, I mean, people, I mean, like HubSpot has, has a pretty good campaign tracking dashboard, right? Oh, yeah. As you're setting up your campaigns, um, you know, there's UTM codes. Yeah. Do they have built in UTM codes for, is, is UTM codes a predominant way or is there some other way that, you, that uh, is implemented? I mean, for example, with tracking, right, you want to implement UTM codes, right, and see where your traffic sources are coming from yeah. um, at times. Like, like for example, if there's this source, um, like a Reddit form, and you post your article at the Reddit form, you want to track, like, a, have a UTM code yeah. for that so you know the traffic's coming from, from Reddit, for example. Um, I mean, like, campaign tracking... There's there. I would say, as far as campaign tracking, I, I would say there's like you can track it with like an Excel spreadsheet, but a lot of the tracking is done natively in in HubSpot. Oh, right? okay. So, you can, so it takes you can care see, of that for you. Yeah. So you can see the ROI of of paid ads, social, um, as long as you attach all the assets right mm -hmm. to that campaign. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see you can see the out the outcomes of your campaign. And uh, yeah. marketing influenced revenue, and I mean, mar like marketing attribution is is like a black box and is a can of worms for is, like operations. It? Yeah, like because you can say, yeah, I, I did all this stuff and I influenced like this much revenue, which and you're like, it's great. And if you're using the sales tools or if you've integrated Salesforce properly, you can say, yeah, this campaign is uh, integrate like drove these deals into the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, uh, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see companies uh, make when it comes to implementing uh, the marketing automation and business processes that, that you do? Um, biggest mistakes I've seen is like trying to make a soup sandwich of systems into straight spaghetti. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. You're trying to make everything do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, if you already have, like, like a, what, what helps what we call a Frankenspot set of systems. Yeah. Like, it's, it is not easy to, to like unravel it. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, and I mean, like, like HubSpot, like, we prefer you to be completely on HubSpot across sales, marketing, and customer success and have your yeah. website on the CMS, right? That's the preferred method, right? Yeah. But because people want this like teeny feature or a red Jeep on Tuesdays out of this one platform, like say yeah. when you're doing sales automation, like outreach has this one report that I really want, like, and for, and we help the client like figure out, it's like, okay, just because outreach has this one report doesn't mean you can't create it in HubSpot. Like you can yeah. create the same report in HubSpot. You just yeah. need a little bit of help. So it's like really digging deep into the issues. Yeah. Right? So having um, a harmonized all-in-one platform is probably the best route to go. Yeah, having an all-in-one platform, but if but it really depends on what your business needs, right? Because yeah. you might need something a bit more comp like more complex than HubSpot service tools. Like you uh, might okay. need to be on intercom or you might need to be on like another, a, a different tool. Yeah. Right. But it, it really depends on what your, your business case and your business needs are. Absolutely. 
Hey, is there anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like me to ask that I missed? Uh, not, not really. Um, I would say a little plug for FIA marketing. We're really good at putting your business process into your CRM. Yeah. And I also run the RevOps Careers podcast. Oh, yeah. Um, so, so I interview different folks in RevOps about their okay. careers and I figure out what, you know, we discover what their biggest challenges are. Um, and we, we learn, we learn about um, just, you know, what, what you would tell yourself yeah, when you're younger in your career. And I think yeah. the biggest value prop of the RevOps career podcast is that you, you learn from different folks in the community mm -hmm. and, um, you can also connect with these folks on on LinkedIn from oh yeah from the podcast show notes so you can continue the conversation further with these folks um, and see if they're interested in mentoring you or if you know you just want to have a coffee with them and and just learn more about how they've tackled certain challenges that that you might yeah. be facing Absolutely. So if people want to learn more about you, uh, where would they find more information about you, starting with the RevOps podcast? So the RevOps podcast is available at fia.careers. Um, and uh, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, all the, all the podcast apps that are out there. Um, yeah. You can find me on LinkedIn. Um, or you can... Give me a call at 720-409-0458. That's my business number. So I'm pretty, I'm right pretty old-fashioned. I have LinkedIn, right email, and the, <laughs> and the phone. phone. And the phone. I, yeah. I do pick up the phone. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Hey, well, I want to thank you very much for being on the show today, taking time out of your day. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, you have a wonderful day. Cool. Thanks, right Matt. No problem.